is the Leaders Anchor Show. Let yourself be inspired by real world leaders and their experience. Sharing knowledge is what it's all about. Learning from experience. See what real world leaders have to say. Welcome Krishna Gandhi Thank to you. Leaders Anchor. Thank you. Uh, and this is when I have a one-to-one -one section with Great. you where the world would like to explore a little bit about your life. Tell me about you, basically, briefly. About Who is me. Krishna Gandhi? Your name is so powerful. Right. Well, How do you live with a name like that? Um, well, I just try and keep my intention and my actions very aligned. Tend to be very transparent. And, um, yeah, I just don't lie to myself at least and uh, I think that helps um, part of it in maintaining some level of up to that name yeah yeah I think so and then the other half is actually then I think it's a natural inclination I think just because I'm curious and I want to understand things but part of understanding that uh, understanding everything is well morals come into it integrity comes into it because it's part of everything anyway there is a science to it all there's meaning behind those values. It's not quite random. You talk about morals and integrity and um, science. How do you connect all of these? Uh, what what yeah. do you think morals well, is important in anything? Well, it's, it's if you want, if you philosophy kind of goes into understanding everything, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think. When you look at any um, any uh, subject and you, you go into the depth of that subject, it always takes you to its philosophical implications. So it could be anything, you know, it could be music, it will take you into its depth of music will be math and, you know, how, it, how you see the mathematical patterns in nature and, you know, how it makes you feel how the certain kind of combinations of notes and rhythms and that make you feel emotions so it kind of it'll take you to understanding the universe if you just kind of stick in one subject so uh and, not, and so that's what i think where people who have made advances great advances always stuck in that one field and it's kind of taken them um to understand a lot of things um, so with science, even with like, if you look at Einstein, he, he was really curious about how, you know, physics, how things worked. Mm -hmm. And he used science then, such as um, um, relativity, mm -hmm. um, to, to understand the universe. Mm -hmm. And he, he himself was a very spiritual person. Uh, um, a lot of these philosophers, you know, Plato, Socrates, uh, um, who are the great leaders, and Gandhi, also through his work, and experiences um, and his passion led him to um, doing what he did. Mm. Again, there's a common commonality is that all of them tend to have values and morals and integrity because that's what comes with something that you're really passionate about. How does that relate to the work that you do? Morals, integrity, values? Well, well, tell us about the work that well, you do. Well, if you. everything is energy, mm. ultimately, even in terms of like in terms of physics and quantum mechanics and mm -hmm. everything's energy and um, our thought has an energy so uh, certain frequencies of activity um, they matter mm -hmm. so um, have good intentions have a frequency that you send them out and nothing stops you know everything's always constantly traveling mm -hmm. um, you know we look at the stars today and we think that's how they are that's how they are, but actually, at the source, some of them are not even alive. It's just that it's taken hundreds and thousands of years for the light to get to us. Mm. But that light constantly travels. So with anything, with any energies, it's, 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 I think it's a rule of thumb, isn't it? That energy never, you can create it or destroy it, it just transforms. Have you, have so, you always so, been philosophical? Sorry for interjecting. Have you always been this philosophical? Um, how did you grow up? Um, when did this all start? I, I, I think I had the I had the um, opportunity to always be quite explorative. Mm. So um, a kind of just only child, always exploring things. Um, and 
I went to a Sunday school that I still go to. So one of my, um, in a person that I consider very dear and has inspired me, is uh, Pandurang Sastri Atavli, who is a philosopher, mm. um, amazing philosopher, and I think maybe even maybe more. I mean, he's quite instrumental to a lot of transforming many people, millions and more, hundreds of millions of people's of lives through actual. Uh, uh, living his life and doing the work, but silently, mm. you know. Um, so he has been a huge influence um, in triggering uh, the curiosity why, what, when. And there's two major uh, incidents, and one was when I was about nine, I think. I looked at the Great Atlas and, you know, had looked at the solar system and I just thought, okay, you know, here's Earth and Earth is and here's England and here's my house in England and mm. you know kind of and then I'm in the house and so I can't understand myself the size of myself in the solar system and kind of was okay with that you know totally fine with that and then in the next page it was like the entire universe and um, there were so many galaxies and there was this arrow pointing to nothing saying that's our solar system and I think at that time I just had like this huge metaphysical question of like what the hell why am I even here what's the point of being and I think those kind of uh, elicited lots of questions and, uh, you know, even things that, even though I went to Sunday school, um, it, it, I was listening and it made sense, but it didn't make sense because it, there was still a lot of pruning to do. There's a lot of conditioned uh, ways of thinking mm. and the way of seeing things. So, and then I think I was, uh, and then I became like scared of death and that was like a constant issue so I think I had I think I called on an event you know how you attract events I, I don't know maybe so I was about 14 and I was uh, in America um, at, in the Atlantic Ocean and there's one wave just come and took me out and so that was my near to death wow. so that was very satisfying probably the best experience in my life because that kind of took that fear away and just made me realize that there's definitely something more than this Tell me about your journey uh, this time, especially with the work that you do, um, Simonix. How long have you been in this business? So Simonix was, um, I registered Simonix in May this year, mm. and um, but it, it, I started Neurobeats in 2004, um, and that was um, following three years of investigation in this particular area. So 2001 is when I really started to um, uh, that's when I came across brainwaves. How old were you then? 20, 20, 21. 21? Mm. 21 so you can get, you can guess how old I am now. <laughs> that's quite a long time. Well, uh, yeah. I, I, like to, I like to attend guessing your age now. How old are you? So I'm 33 now. You're 33 yes. now? Yes. Unbelievable. It's a long journey. It's a long, tell me about this journey. What has been your down? I want to know your down moments oh. and when you thought that everybody had given up and you know that there was no way what, what was going through your mind when you, you, you thought about these moments uh, i lost um faith in just everything you know i didn't everything didn't make sense i was skeptical about everything and mm -hmm. uh, my whole web of belief broke down because i questioned everything like fundamentally even things i'm seeing seeing and hearing mm -hmm. um and then rebuilding that until every premise is really strong, I can validate it. You know, I needed a, I needed a premise to make everything make make for everything to make sense. Mm. And brainwaves. When I came across the brainwaves, mm. it was a measurable thing that linked the mind and brain. It just made sense. So, so that was a strong enough premise about the mind existing because we can measure it. Mm. And then there's matter and how matter and mind links. Mm. So that gave it a really strong base to then rebuild my web of belief. Now this is in my early twenties. How did you overcome it, basically? I think I, How did you I just continued, you know, against the odds. I mean, it was I wasn't making sense to myself, mm. and I wasn't making sense to you know my peers around me, or my family, or my friends around me, mm. um, and that. That's the hardest bit, really, because you know you really do question everything. Mm. You don't believe anything. That really is very difficult. And if you don't know what you know, your friends and family don't. They're not going to know what you know. Mm. And so you're going to have this 
very uncertain. You're uncertain about who you are, and then your relationships with people, and then your what your 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 place in society and your place in the world. You know, for a minute I was like, I'm just out of this time zone kind of thing, but um, I I was convinced. I, I knew about this being an absolute certain premise, mm -hmm. so I just kept on building, and uh, and and that was my strength because I knew that that was the truth. That was one truth I can go on, and I just built it. It took a few years to um, um, rebuild my entire web of belief and make sense of the world in terms of understanding this new science that's come into it, mm. and then reconcile it with my with how things are. That's that was the biggest thing, and so once that once I kind of put all the pieces, the jigsaws, the jigsaws together, I think it's probably the strongest person, uh, strongest place I've ever been because mm. everything's so validated and looked into and checked and researched. Mm -hmm. I think you never know; someone might pull me up on a premise and completely break me. But we'll see about that. I'm open to that too. But um, and then so. Also, then you, when you communicate the science, sometimes people don't want to know because it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. It's inconvenient to them because it upsets their web of belief and then um, and their way of believe, you know, seeing things and perceiving things and the way they've lived their life. And so it's a challenge to, you know, friends, fam friends and family around me. But it's also academically a challenge because it's not accepted academically at that time. Mm. It's only um, uh, a few people that were doing the research. Um, it, you know, previously, since 1960 something, but the research seemed to have disappeared for whatever reason that may be. Um, and so it's been very under underreported, almost, and I don't know why. Well, there might be reasons, <clears throat> but so so academically, it's only coming, starting to come about now. The mm. work in EEG, the significance of the activity, mm. the importance of you know uh, the information in the EEG. Is very much, uh, you know, um, uh, an emerging area in science. How, how did you now? Uh, eventually, when you made your first breakthrough, and you thought that you had arrived, and looking at your journey so far, and, and the pain, and and all the things that you went through, how does it feel like now? Do you think that anybody can 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 make it happen too? I mean, you, you didn't have much support from family and friends, and I think. I. No, I, I mean, I think maybe maybe not to back me up in my belief, mm -hmm. but I'm blessed enough to be mm -hmm. able to even carry out the investigation. You know, I mean, that's I mean, that's a blessing in itself, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a, I'm not going to take it for granted. I, I was able to carry out the research and do it and feel free to like do the exploration. No one mm -hmm. stopped me mm -hmm. and let me carry on doing what I wanted to do. So I had that freedom to do it. So in that way, I I can't say uh, I didn't have any support, mm. but um, you know you can always. There's always room to complain about everything in, yeah. in the end of the day. But it's been difficult internally. It's an internal challenge mm. because there's insecurities, and you know, are you accepted because of your way of thinking, mm. and you not, and are you those personal challenges? And I think, um, without pointing fingers, it, where I am now, is a bless. It's it's everything happened for for a reason. So. Everything happens for a reason, and um, she's loving what she she does. Um, we are very happy that you could make it here uh, to share with us a bit of your life. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share your life with the with the rest of the world. Thanks for Thank coming you. on the Leaders Thank Anchor you. Show. Thank you very much.